Let's do the same thing now using VS Code. So in VS Code, before we go there, there is a page called VS Code Recipes that is put out by Microsoft. And we're gonna be looking closely at the Angular CLI recipe. This is gonna allow us or help us to debug our Angular CLI app application. Um, I believe that VS Code, uh, if you have the latest, if you go to your extensions, the GS deb debugger is, because uh, in some other videos you might uh, hear people talking about Chrome debugger. You don't need to do that anymore because I believe that the JS debugger is built in. Um, is it called JS debugger or JS debug? Something like that. Anyways, the thing is um, they do have that built in and you don't have to install anything. It comes with the latest version of VS Code, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is the recipe basically has like, we already have an Angular application and everything. So the thing is we're gonna have to create what is called a launch JSON file. Most of the time, you're gonna have a dot VS code folder. And in this dot VS code folder, we just have an extension JSON. We don't have anything else, okay? So now what we're gonna do, we wanna run and debug inside of VS code. So we have the run and debug uh, option right here. So let's go ahead and the moment we create uh, or we just like click on run and debug, it's gonna like have this uh, window and we wanna be able to do that debug in Chrome, okay? So it creates a launch JSON file for us. And then it says, based on like uh, our environment, it's gonna say like the type and then the type of request, which is just gonna launch a new window and then the name. So the name that you see here is the name that is in here, basically. But let's go back to the recipes and they basically ask you to copy this for the Angular CLI and start here. So I'm gonna copy it, come back to the IDE and paste it over here. Okay, what is important here? So there is a pre-launch task. You can read more about it. It's, it's pretty straightforward. I was able to pretty much, I'm not a big config guy and I was pretty much able to figure out pretty quickly. But the most important part here is the pre-launch task is saying that it's gonna target an NPM and then the, the, the start script. So let's open our package JSON. And then you have a start script here. So it will be targeting the start script and will just do ng serve. Okay. But if it does ng serve that way, it's going to serve it with the default. And you might not want to be running your, 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 your debugging um, on your 4200 port. You might be having a select port that you want to use for your debugging. So what we're going to do, let's go back to the recipes. They do have a secondary file here called task. And then we're gonna copy this, and that's task with an S. So be, be very careful to, to name it uh, task with an S JSON. We're gonna come back here and uh, in the dot VS code, so this is where it should exist. Dot VS code, we're gonna add a new file and we're gonna call it task. And it's important that you put it in the plural because that's one that it's gonna be looking for. And then we're just gonna paste uh, what we have in there. So you see that the type NPM and the script start, this is, this is matching what we have in our uh, pre-launch. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna create a new script and I'm gonna call it start debug, okay? And instead of going to uh, 4200, I want it to go to port 9200. There you go. And while we're here, instead of the name just saying ng serve, um, so if I come here, the run and debug now that I have, um, um, instead of saying just ng serve, what is the name of this project? This project's name is debug angular. I'm going to call it debug angular serve, not debug. <laughs> Debug Angular Serve, okay? Let me copy this. 
command copy. Let me save it. And you see now that I have debug angular serve. Now I'm going to do the same thing for test, even though I'm not going to show test today and end to end E to E command V command S. Now in my drop down here, I have debug angular serve debug angular test and then debug angular E to E. If you want, you can have the serve before, so you don't have to have the, the drop down uh, telling you in which one you are, but I'm okay with this. So now I want it to have uh, as the target a start debug, but the start debug doesn't exist yet. So I'm gonna go back to my uh, first, I mean launch JSON. I'm gonna go to my task JSON and instead of script start, I'm gonna have script start debug. All right. Finally, in my package JSON, let's just copy this line and paste it. Command C, Command V, if you're on the Mac, and then I'm gonna add start debug. And on the serve here, I want it to go to port ninety two hundred, not ninety three, ninety two hundred. There you go. Now my setup is ready. I went to VS Code uh, recipes. I got my launch JSON. I mean, I got, I copied a launch JSON, which after I uh, fired up here my run and debug, I copied over. I did the same thing with task JSON. And now I have a dedicated script that is just going to run ng serve on port 9200. And that's going to be my debug session since this is, since this is going to launch a whole new screen. Okay. So after all of this is done, after this setup is done, now I can come, make sure that I'm in deb debug angular serve and I'm just going to click play. Okay. So you see that now we have this, it's going to do npm run start debug. And then it's going to do the ng serve on port 9200, which is exactly what I wanted. Okay. So let's give it a second here. And you're going to see in a second why this whole setup like is so important, why we are going through this whole trouble. All right. We have all of that compiled successfully. Great. And now you see that it's showing Angular um, in this new um, browser. It's like localhost 9200. Uh, let's expand on it. Okay. And um, now we don't even need to use the console here because we're going to do the same thing we were doing exactly in Chrome. So let's go back. Let's collapse this to give us some space. And let's do the same with this. Let's give us some more space here. And I'm going to go back to app component and I'm going to put my first breakpoint here now return new object like we had earlier. So that's my first breakpoint. Then I'm going to go to filter return is true. I'm going to put my second breakpoint. Okay. Now when I do this and I go back to 9200 and I refresh it, you're going to see that my breakpoints get fired up and I'm right inside of VS code. And you see here, look, we have the variable lapse is at zero right now. The new object only has residential setup as we are expecting. So now I can walk through, I can either go to my next breakpoint or I can step over or I can step into. So let's go to the next breakpoint, which is return is true. And then is true here is going to be false. It's going to be undefined. Okay. So as I hover through, you see that is true is false. Just by hovering over, you see that now you have this information, but at the same time here, like you had in the browser, you have the variables in the context you are in. So let's keep on going. It comes back to new object. This time lapse is equal to one. Okay. And is true is still going to be false and you're still going to see that um, um, we don't have um, we don't have anything for account status but we do have something for account services 
So it is doing the right sequence, like what we were expecting, okay? So real quick, uh, lapse e equal to return here is true, is still gonna be false. We have the setup here, everything is here, but we don't have an account status yet. And then finally, if we go one more time, now this time is true, is true. And here, since I'm in VS Code, let me put like real quick one more breakpoint here. And then when I hit it, it's gonna come here right there, okay? So I should have had this breakpoint in the, in the beginning. And then now, but I'm in VS Code, I can even add stuff as I'm doing this. I can add them in real time. I can debug in real time. I can change the code in real time. And still that functionality with the breakpoints, the debugging, everything is gonna be there. So you see that we have account info. And then if I look here now, I have an account info with everything in it. Now, so as I'm walking through this in my browser, it's still pending at loading because it has to come through here first, then go to the subscribe block. So let's do something. Let's do uh, subscribe is going to give us data. And then here, let's just uh, console that log the data. There we go. And then let's add a breakpoint for it. So brand new breakpoint. It might not, you might have, if we do this sometimes, you might have to restart because this is kind of like uh, one of the only part where VS Code doesn't shine because it's gonna be like uh, a disconnected breakpoint, but you get the idea. So let me uh, just save this. Let's see, oh, there you go. After saving it, I can add my breakpoint. I'm gonna just uh, fast forward to the point where it's gonna hit data. Return is true. Now we have returning this account info and we're expecting it to get into our subscribe block, which is does. And when it, when it does this, when you go back here and finally you hit your final breakpoint, now you have the account number showing up without a problem. So yeah, so it's a little extensive show of two ways. One, I mean, essentially one way, but in two different like medium. One, directly inside of Chrome, and you have a lot of things that you can do there like with uh, the dev tools. And there's a dedicated tool called like the Angular Dev Tools that you might want to look into if you want to take it a step further. That was one that was released by the Angular team. But that's the recipe that we had for you today. And I see you soon for the next episode.